Okay, now we get to chapter four, one of the most important chapters in um, the Ebbing textbook. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously they're all important, but this one, if you understand it inside out and upside down, it will carry you through a lot of very important topics in this class and also in higher level chemistry classes. So super important to understand this chapter. Uh, it's filled with lots of different topics, but we're going to start off with the first topic of chapter four, which is identifying electrolytes, knowing which ones are the strong electrolytes. Uh, okay, what is an electrolyte? I just put some definitions on the board here for you. Uh, an electrolyte or electrolytes are compounds that freely dissociate into ions in aqueous solutions. What's an aqueous solution? That means that when you're dissolving it in water. So anytime you throw something in water, if it breaks apart, dissociates into ions very freely, it is considered an electrolyte. Okay, now there's a difference between a strong electrolyte and a weak electrolyte. A weak electrolyte doesn't do that very much. It does it, it dissolves, but it does not produce a lot of ions. So basically the equilibrium is more on the left rather than on the right. So you don't produce a lot of ions with a weak electrolyte. It dissolves, but you don't produce a lot of ions. However, a strong electrolyte dissociates pretty much completely. So a strong electrolyte exists in solution almost entirely as ions, okay? Now, there are three categories that are considered strong electrolytes. First category, most ionic salts that are water soluble are strong electrolytes. Well, there are so many ionic salts. How are you supposed to know which ones are considered strong electrolytes? Well, the ones that are soluble in water. How are you supposed to know the ones that are soluble in water? This table over here. You need to print it out and you need to study it and memorize it, okay? It becomes second nature after a while, but you've got to do it just like you had to learn all your polyatomic ions. You need to know the solubility table. This is um, table 4.1. It says solubility rules for ionic compounds. And it's not that hard to know once you start applying it. So while you're doing your homework and while you're studying, um, just have it printed in front of you and you can refer to it. But then eventually you are going to have to memorize it. What always helps me is to just first start off with the easy thing. So basically it's telling you that all group 1A is always soluble. It doesn't matter what you're hooked up to, it's always gonna be soluble. And we'll do some examples of this. Um, and ammonium, always, always, always soluble. Anything that has a nitrate in it, always soluble. Anything that has an acetate in it, always soluble. And then it says, Chlorides, bromides, iodides are all soluble. So anything that has a chloride in it, bromide in it, iodide in it, also, except there are exceptions. And here are the exceptions. So you got to know the exceptions. If you're hooked up to silver, mercury, lead, silver, mercury, lead, silver, mercury, lead. Okay. So silver, mercury, lead, when they're hooked up to chlorides, bromides, iodides, they make it insoluble. But hook any other metal, soluble. Sulfates most of them are soluble. In fact, the majority of them are soluble. But if a sulfate is hooked up to a calcium, barium, strontium, silver, mercury, lead. So aside from silver, mercury, lead, the sulfates are insoluble when they're hooked up to calcium, strontium, or barium. Now, while you're doing your OWL homework, they may give you some other side bizarre rules. Just, you know, do whatever OWL wants while you're doing the homework. But for the exam, you need to know this table, okay? So those are your soluble ones. And then we get into the insoluble ones. So these guys, carbonates, false phosphates, sulfides, and hydroxides, those are mainly insoluble. When aren't they insoluble? When they're hooked up to group 1A or ammonium, okay? With the hydroxides, we're going to deal with them separately when we're talking about bases. But basically, the hydroxides are insoluble unless they're hooked up to group 1A or heavy group 2A. What do I mean by heavy group 2A? Calcium and heavier. So calcium, strontium, barium, um, not magnesium. So those are 
all going to be soluble. Group 1A and heavy group 2A hydroxide are soluble. Um, okay, so know this table, feel comfortable with it, and we'll move on. So most ionic salts that are water soluble are strong electrolytes. What else are strong electrolytes? So there are three categories that are strong electrolytes. Ionic salts that are soluble in water. Strong acids. What are the strong acids? Do you guys remember the strong acids from intro chem class? Six strong acids. The um, periodic table can help you a little bit. So you've got um, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. So those three halogens are considered strong acids, not hydrofluoric. And then you also have nitric acid, HNO3, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and perchloric acid, HClO4. Those are the six strong acids, okay? And then the other strong electrolyte are the strong soluble bases. Strong soluble bases are group 1A metal hydroxides, so lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide. Those are strong soluble bases. Also heavy group 2A, just like I told you a, sec a little while ago. So heavy meaning calcium and heavier. So calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Okay, that's in a nutshell the rules for the strong electrolytes. Why do we care about the strong electrolytes? Because we're going to learn how to create different types of chemical equations. Like the equations you've always been writing so far in chemistry have been molecular equations or formula unit equations. But in this chapter, we're going to learn how to break those equations apart and turn them into um, formula unit equations and then turn them into complete ionic equations, and then turn them into net ionic equations. So there are three different types we're going to be working with. But before we get into the types of equations, let's practice a little bit. Let's say I put this on the board, or I put uh, this on the board. Or I put, um, let's say, this on the board. And I ask you, first of all, what are these things? Are they acids, bases, or salts? Well, how are you supposed to know that something is an acid? You'll always see an H right in the front there, at least for what we're going to be working with in this class. There are many different types of acids. But a typical bronsted Lowry acid is a substance that will donate a proton, a hydrogen ion. So you'll see it right in the front. It could be monoprotic, diprotic, triprotic, but you'll always see it right there in the front. So this is an acid. Okay, so we'll take a look at this acid. Is this acid one of the six strong acids I just mentioned? It's nitric acid. So this would be a, an electrolyte, a strong electrolyte. Okay. Is this potassium hydroxide one of the strong soluble bases that I just mentioned? Is it a group 1A metal hydroxide? Yes, it is. So this is a strong electrolyte. Okay. Zinc nitrate. Is this one of the soluble ionic salts that we talked about? So if you don't have it memorized yet, look at your table. It says here, nitrates are all soluble. So yes, strong electrolyte. What do we do when we have a strong electrolyte? We break it apart into ions. Okay, so what's it going to look like? If I turn nitric acid into ions, what ions are we talking about? We're talking about a hydrogen ion and a nitrate ion. So you go H plus aqueous plus NO3 minus aqueous because you have the nitrate polyatomic ion and the hydrogen ion. Aqueous means that they're dissolved in water. Okay, what about the potassium hydroxide? 
you write K plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous. Okay. What about this guy, zinc nitrate? Because it's soluble in water, it's going to completely dissociate into ions. So you end up with Zn2 plus aqueous plus this subscript over here becomes two nitrates to write two NO3 minus aqueous. So you need to be able to practice with a whole bunch of different compounds that I give you and break them apart properly into ions if they are strong electrolytes. Well, what if it's a weak electrolyte? What if instead of HNO3, I wrote HNO2, nitric acid? It is not one of the six strong acids, so you just write aqueous. It is soluble in water, but it is not a strong acid, so it does not break apart into ions. Okay? Now, what if instead of zinc nitrate, I had zinc phosphate? So you take a look and you see, are the phosphates soluble in water? No. When something is insoluble, then you just write an S. What does S mean? It's a solid, it's a precipitate. So if you end up forming zinc phosphate as a product, that would be considered a precipitation reaction. You are getting a solid as a product, a precipitate as a product, okay? What if I had um, iron three hydroxide? Is this one of the strong soluble bases? It's not a group 1A hydroxide or a heavy group 2A. This one also is insoluble. So you notice here, not a strong electrolyte, not a strong electrolyte, not a strong electrolyte. With the acids though, they're all aqueous, they're all soluble in water, but they just don't break apart into you know, a lot of ions the way the strong one, strong acids do. With the bases that are not group 1A and heavy group 2A, and with the ionic salts that are not soluble, those just precipitate out of solution, and you write an S there for solid. Okay? So in the next video, we'll practice creating um, different types of equations. We'll start off with the formula unit molecular equation, and then turn that into a complete ionic equation or total ionic equation, and then turn that into a net ionic equation. Okay?